blow them or throw them away, you put them in that water and they make sure you do. That's a handful of weeds. But you know what? As mothers, you deserve an armful of roses. And we thank y'all for the honor you've given mothers this morning. But my mom's going on to be with the Lord. And, um, but I miss her. And all those things she taught me, they're still there. And all of our mothers are special. But you know what? God gave those mothers. He, and he has a heart of a mother. And he loves us. So when they bring you those weeds, remember, those are very special. And that's what we are to God. We may look like a weed to this world, but we're a bouquet of roses fit for the master's use. This is called Handful of Weeds. Wow. 
What a um, perfect song to celebrate Mother's Day. More than once, I've seen the mother of my children do without. You know, there's just one piece of chicken left. And she'll say, I'm not very hungry. So that one of the children that can already had six pieces could have one more. Thank you so very much. Thank you for all that you have done today to help us to celebrate this very special day. I do realize that Mother's Day is a holiday that brings different emotions. I understand that. It brings pleasure and happiness and joy, but it also brings sadness and sorrow. I understand that. When you think about your mother that's gone on and you, you miss her so much, all I can do, ask you to do is do what the song said, hymn number 54, count the blessings that you had with that mother. Count the blessings. And also realize that it brings mixed emotions sometimes because God has not permitted every woman to be a mother. And I don't have the answer to that. But I know sometimes it's very uh, heartbreaking when you want a child and you just cannot have a child. You're noticing the message this morning that I'm going to tell you that it's a blessing to be a mother and it's also a blessing not to be a mother. And some of the mothers will probably tell you it's a huge blessing not to be a mother sometimes. Today's Mother's Day is a very special day, as I mentioned. And what I'm going to do this morning in the message is, is I'm going to bring your attention to two special mothers that we find recorded in the Word of God. We're going to look at um, Mary the mother of Jesus, who was a very special lady, amen? And we're also going to look at Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, who was also a very special lady. And both of these ladies responded to the call of God to simply do the job that God had given them to do. Now, I say this to every mother in this service. You have a special calling. God has given you a huge responsibility. Sometimes you have to raise that child by yourself because the stinking daddy is not around or has left or whatever the case may be, may be passed on. But I do want you to understand that we all have a special calling when God calls upon us to raise that child. The key to the greatness of a mother is two things. Faith and faithfulness. The key to faithfulness is faith. The key to faith is trust. We hear the message of God. We hear the calling of God. We believe the message of God. We believe the calling of God. We call that faith. And then we trust the calling of God. And my friend, we call that faithfulness. That's action. We do the message of God. These two mothers that we're going to look at today, they walked with the Lord. And they showed great faith in impossible situations. I could ask a testimony this morning. I could ask each of you to stand that, that a mother, even and a dad as well, and say, would you share with us about that impossible situation that you know God was the only one that was able to get you through it? Amen? 
But Mary and Elizabeth both, they believed this verse of Scripture over in uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 37, where it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Those of you that are a mother, you have been called upon to do a humanly impossible job to raise that child in the direction that God wants that child to go. It's not going to be easy. Some of you that have already on this that back end of that, you know that it's not easy. But this verse of Scripture is a verse of Scripture that all mothers need. Amen? All mothers. Dads as well. This verse helps you to keep going when the going is tough. When the going is hard, it helps all of us to get through the tough times. So since Elizabeth is mentioned first, let's jump in and talk about Elizabeth in Luke chapter 1. I've got to mention this. A lot of times when the pastor preaches on verses of Scripture that we're fixing to look at, one of the first things that usually come to mind to many people is, I've heard this hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. I know it from one end to the other. But today, I want you to pay close attention. I believe today, God can share something with you that you've never seen before that will enable you to do what you've never done before. And that's my prayer as we look at these verses of Scripture. I'm convinced that if you will open your heart to God, you'll begin to see some things that you've never seen before and maybe even do some things that you've never done before. This message can be a powerful message not only to the mothers, but also to the dads and to each and every one of us that, yes, does have a special calling of God. Now, as I mentioned earlier, your special calling of God may not be to be a mom. Your special calling of God may not be to be a, a father. But you all have a special calling of God. Do you agree with that? We all have a special calling of God. So let's look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. And of the course of Ab Abba, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now when you study the mother of Jesus, who is Mary, you find a lot of verses of Scripture. But unfortunately, there's just two or three concerning Elizabeth. But I want you to know, we learn a lot from what God has put here concerning Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Notice what God says about both of these in verse 6. And they were both righteous with God. Talking about both Elizabeth and um, Zacharias. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. So it tells us here that they was righteous, they was walking in all the commandments of the Lord and the ordinances, and they were blameless. Both the mom and the dad to be, it says this about them. And then we're told in verse 7 that Elizabeth could not have children. Notice what it says. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now the scripture does not tell us how old they were. But when it says well stricken in years, they could have been as old as Charles Hines. Well stricken in years. Or, or Terry O'Toole as well, by the way. But they were older people. And Elizabeth was not able to have a child. Now let me insert something especially during the Bible times, for whatever the reason may be, there are certain people that believed 
that it was a punishment from God if a woman could not have a child. And not only did they believe that sometimes, they would tell that as well. And there was a lot of gossip that would go on about a woman that could not have a child. And sometimes there would be talk about, I wonder what sin that woman did that, that would prevent her from having a child. I wonder what sin maybe the father did that would prevent them from having children. And sometimes preachers unintentionally add to these, these pains in this message by emphasizing how much of a blessing it is from God to have children. Well, the Bible does say that. Over in Psalms 127, it says, Lo, children are inheritance of the Lord, and of the fruit of the womb is His reward. But also, I want to point out that it is also a blessing not to have children as well. God clearly tells us that both of these people, uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah, were righteous and walking with God. So they had not done anything wrong that would cause them not to be able to have children, but God had a special plan. And this is the thing that you need to notice this morning. God may have a special plan for you that does not include the bearing of children or the raising of children. God's timing is always perfect. We learn from Elizabeth not to be bitter or depressed or hopeless when things don't go our way. Instead, we need to learn that God does have a perfect plan for us that may be different than the plan that we have. We just simply need to do as they did, continue to trust God. Amen? Continue to to trust God. I, I think about, uh, man, it's been many years ago now, Linda, when we, um, we had a, um, a teenage girl that um, became pregnant uh, in our church when I was planting a church in um, Hooks, Texas. Hooks, Texas. A long time ago. And um, long story short, we made arrangements for this child to be adopted by Linda's niece and nephew who was not able to have children. They could not have children. They wanted children so bad and they tried to adopt and it was just a big problem back there to do that. But they was able to adopt this little child. Matter of fact, when the child was born, they was at the, in the hospital and received that child right there, right there. And this little teenage girl was a blessing to the extent that she provided a child. I'm, I'm not condoning the sin that she committed, but God used this girl to be a blessing to provide a child for a couple that could not have children. They could not have children. They tried and tried and tried. Unfortunately, or maybe I should say fortunately, after they adopted this child, they had two. Later. <laughs> and uh, when I was a cop now even, so interesting, very interesting. God's timing is sometimes very unusual, and we don't quite understand it. So if you're single, God still may have the perfect mate for you. He may still be working on both of you to get both of you where you need to be to be the perfect mate of each other. But also, I just simply need to insert, it may not be God's plan for you to marry. It may be God's plan for you to be single all your life. And you say, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I understand completely. But I'm telling you right now, God's plan is best. Sometimes we don't like it. But his plan is always best. Sometimes, very exciting, we get become very excited about what is going to happen in life. And the angel Gabriel appeared to Elizabeth's husband when he was in the temple. And I want you to listen to what this angel said to Elizabeth. In fact, just look at it with me in verse 11. 
The scripture says, and there appeared unto him, talking about the priest, um, Zacharias, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now, same thing would have happened to you. All of a sudden, you're there by yourself. You're taking care of business. And all of a sudden, you see somebody. And it was the angel of the Lord. I'm not sure if he recognized who it was or what this person was here for, but he recognized somebody was there. It was a divine intruder. And then notice the message that he gets Verses 13 through 17. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Now what does that tell you right there? He's been praying for a child. I'm not sure if he's still praying, if he's as old as some of those guys I mentioned earlier, but he had been praying for a child to come. He says, thy, he said, Your, your prayer has been heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. Listen to this. God's plan, God's timing. Think about that. God's plan, God's timing. The scripture says that through this child that they're going to bear many would be reached for the Lord. Verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the disobedience to the wisdom of the just (coughs) and make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Keep in mind, Jesus hasn't come yet. God had chosen John the Baptist to be the one that would prepare the way for the Lord when he would come. Now notice his question in verse 18. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. He said, how is this going to happen? I'm I'm, I'm already old. You're telling me this is going to happen. He said, I just don't believe this. I just don't believe this. Now notice verse 19. And the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, to show thee these great tidings. Verse 20. And behold, thou shalt be dumb. In other words, he's not going to be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Boy, there's a warning right there, amen? You better be careful what you don't believe when God sends you a message. He can can cause you to be dumb. And I'm not talking about mentally dumb, because I think some of that has already happened with some people. But I'm talking about we would not be able to speak, is what the Scripture says. A very strong warning there, very strong warning. But notice verse 21. He returns home, and Elizabeth becomes pregnant shortly thereafter. It says, And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he had tarried so long in the temple. wonder what he's doing over there in the temple. He's usually not there that long. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he had beckoned unto them and remained speechless. Keep in mind, he's not going to be able to speak for nine months. Not going to be able to speak. It came to pass that as soon as the days of the ministration were accomplished, he departed unto his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. We see here that for some reason, Elizabeth was feeling a little bit guilty that she was not able to have children. But now she sees that there was no reason to feel guilty. It was all within God's plan. Jump all the way down to verse 57. Verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came, and she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son, 
And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. This may be some of the same religious folks that was gossiping earlier, and now they're rejoicing. Probably puzzled, (laughs) but rejoicing at the same time. And then... In verse 59, we see a new problem. By the way, let me go back just one moment. Keep in mind, God's timing is always perfect. It may not make any sense to us, but it's always perfect. But notice the new problem in verse 59. It came to pass that on the eighth day, this was after the child was born, they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. I don't know who these folks are, but they took upon themselves to name the child. Not the mama, not the daddy, but everyone else. Kind of reminds me of some folks today. Amen? And the scripture says in verse 60, And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. That's not so. He shall be called John. And then notice the response of the friends. And they said unto her in verse 61, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And then they tried to talk to the father by hand signals uh, and made signs to his father. Isn't it amazing? He can hear very well. I don't know why they're doing hand signals, but they are. (laughs) And and his name, and and said, said to the father, his name, and the father said in verse 63, and And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And notice the first words that um, Zacharias spoke after he was able to speak. Verse 64, And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake, and he praised God. Isn't that wonderful? Not been able to speak for nine months, but he's now he's praising God with the voice that God had given to him. And fear came on all that dwelt around them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout the hill country of Judea. And all that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Elizabeth and Zacharias' faith enabled them to trust God and God used them in a very wonderful way. Did you know they could have said no? They could have said, no, we don't want any part of this. You know, if you wouldn't give us a child when we was young, we don't want no child now that we're old. They could have said no. What do you think God would have done if they would have said no? Again, I'm just speculating here because I'm not going to speak in behalf of God. But I believe if they would have said no, God would have chose somebody else. And they would have missed out on the blessing of being the parents of this great man of God that would prepare the way of the Lord. Let's jump now over to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Go back to verse 26. Same chapter. Go back to verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin espoused or engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now, Mary and Elizabeth was cousins. Verse 36 tells us that. Mary is a young, unmarried virgin engaged to be married, and all of a sudden God steps in and begins to interrupt their plans. Both Mary and Joseph are descendants of King David. Keep that in mind. It's very important, the ancestry line. This is the line that the Messiah was supposed to come through. Also, let me just insert this. 
for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, the Jews had looked for the Messiah to come. I don't know, maybe there was many discussions of, of a young teenage girl thinking, I wonder if I might be chosen. I wonder if I might be chosen. I wonder if I might be chosen. Because you go in the Old Testament, it tells how it's going to happen. Amen? It's prophesied. They knew what, how it was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, God made a choice, and he chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus Christ. In verse 28, the scripture says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. The messenger says to Mary that you are highly favored, the scripture says. That simply means, highly favored just simply means that she had found grace in the eyes of God, and God was going to do something very special for her. Something that she did not earn, and something that she did not deserve. But I, I will insert this. Both Elizabeth and Mary was chosen by God because of the life that they was living as well. Because if they had not been living the life that they was living, do you think God would have chose them? Not at all. And folks, that's something that you and I need to be careful with. God can choose us to do special things, but it's also going to be dependent upon the life that we're living, whether or not he chooses us to do those special things. He probably has already chosen for you to do something very special, but you just simply will not get your act straightened out so that he can say, this is what I want you to do. So let me insert something here that uh, I think this would be a good time to mention some things that are not true about Mary because there's a lot of falsehood out there concerning Mary. To begin with, Mary is not the mother of God. She's not the mother of God. She's the mother of Jesus. Jesus had two natures. He was not just part God and part man. He was God and he was man at the same time. But Jesus had chose to die as a human. He needed a human mother to come into this world. But she was not the mother of God. She was the mother of Jesus. Secondly, Mary was not a sinless person. The Bible says, tells us in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Verse 47 refers to, to Jesus, she refers to Jesus as her Savior in verse 47. See, I'm convinced that Mary had already accepted her unborn child as her Savior, even though she didn't know who he'd be. They, she had already accepted the coming Messiah to be her Savior. That's how Old Testament saints were saved. They believed that he would come, and they put trust in him that he would come and, and die for them and pay for their entire sin debt. I believe Elizabeth had already been saved as well. Mary did not remain a virgin after she married Joseph. She gave birth to other sons and daughters. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 13, it mentions the names of the sons as James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. And it says also she had, he, uh, Mary had sisters as well. They don't give all the numbers, but she had sisters as well. Mary is also not on the same level of God. Mary is not an individual that you're to pray to and ask for forgiveness of your sins. Only God can do that. And we can only play through, pray through Jesus Christ. But God did chose, choose her to be the mother of Jesus. She was a very special person, just like her cousin was. So notice verse 31. Verse 31. It says, And, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He gives the same type message that he gave to um, Elizabeth some six months earlier. He tells her that she's going to have a child, and he also tells her exactly what name to name this child. Verse 32, He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of the kingdom there shall be no end. Gabriel tells Mary, that the child that she was to give birth to would be the Messiah. Wow, can you imagine 
Can you imagine the thoughts that's entering in this young girl's mind? He also visits jo Joseph later and gives the same message to him over in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21. But unlike... Um, um, unlike Elizabeth's husband, when, when, when he received this, the message, Joseph believed it. Zacharias was a little bit concerned about whether or not he believed it. But look at verse 34. Look at verse 34. And then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She's not saying I don't believe it. She said, I don't understand how this is going to happen. I've never known a man. And then we see in verse 35 the answer. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be called born, called, also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And then he tells us in verse 36, And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth hath also conceived, a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was also barren. And then he tells her in verse 37, for with God. She said, how can this be? He says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Notice her response, verse 38. And Mary said, behold the handmaid of the Lord. I'm your servant. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea. And she entered into the house of Zacharias and she saluted Elizabeth. So she goes to visit her cousin that is now six months pregnant with John the Baptist. And when she goes there, notice what happens. In verse 41, it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. That's John the Baptist. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me? Listen to this. Elizabeth knew exactly what was going on. Whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? Wow. To me, this is extremely exciting. To think about two people, just normal people, other than they was living for God, walking with God, obeying His commandments, was chosen to do a special thing for God. And you have been chosen to do something special as well. You never know. Let me say this to the mothers. You never know who you are raising. You never know who that child is or what that child is going to be. I've asked Dave to come this morning to do a very special song. Uh, this is a very interesting song. Matter of fact, we usually hear it at Christmas time. But I want you to pay close attention to the message. It's entitled, Mary, Did You Know? For the day. I'm going to apologize in advance if I'm squeaking and croaking. Um, just bear with me and pay attention to the message.
What child you are raising. Do you think that Billy Graham's mother had any thought who she was raising? That she was raising a child that one day would stand before thousands and thousands and thousands of people and many would be saved? Do you think that Martin Luther King's mother ever imagined that her son would become the man that he became? Do you think the mother of Abraham Lincoln ever thought that he would one day be the President of the United States of America? Folks, you never know what part you are playing in the plan of God. I guarantee you, my mother never knew what I would become in the eyes of God. She had died before I ever turned my life around. But my friend, both Mary and Elizabeth, they heard the message of God. They believed the message of God. They trusted the message of God. And they was faithful to God's message and was willing to do whatever they needed to do to raise their child in the way that God would want that child to be raised. And this is my question for you. It's a very important question. Are you doing your part? If God has chosen you to be a parent, are you doing your part? 
And I also say this to those of you that may not be a parent, there are some other children out there that need some help, amen? Sometimes they don't have the parent that they need, and that their parent is not fulfilling God's plan for their life, and sometimes they just need some help as well. So I ask you this morning to pray about, are you doing your part in God's plan? Would you stand very quietly and very reverently with me? Father, dear Lord, please take this message and untangle it and help it to be understood and speak to the hearts of each and every one that's here and those that will be watching later. Lord, I just pray that you'd speak to our hearts and show us what great responsibilities that we have to answer your call for our life in whatever part that we can play in your will. And Father, I pray that if anyone is here or we're listening later that don't know Christ as our Savior, God, help them to understand that that's the first step to become what you want them to be. Help them to understand that they are sinners separated from God, from you. And that because of this separation, they're going to spend eternity in hell. That this child that grew up, this child who was the Messiah, who died on the cross of Calvary, help them to trust in him to the complete forgiveness of all their sins. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Would you respond? Softly and tenderly, would you come? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you. waiting and watching watching for you and for me come home come home ye who are weary come home Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Should we lean and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, come home. He who are weary, come home. No one comes. We're going to close at the end of this verse. Anyone else? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Well, we have a blessing here today. Another blessing. Boy, we've been having a lot of additions here lately. God must see something very special that's about to happen. Amen? Absolutely. So Sean and Alex comes this morning. They've been visiting with us now for several months, checking us out, making sure we preach the truth and stand for the truth, and they have found that we do. And they want to become members of this church. They both have been scripturally baptized, and they're coming on promise of letter from Heartland Church in 
Carrollton, Heartland Church in Carrollton. And they've already gone through the membership curriculum as well, so what would be your pleasure? All in favor? Motion made, second. Everybody in favor? All right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Justin, come here a minute, buddy. Justice. I, keep, I call him Justice, Justin, all the time, but what is your name? Justice. His name is Justice, not Justin, Justice. So, Justice, uh, something happened to you a while back. Let me ask you a question. If something was to happen to you right now, if you was to leave this world for whatever the reason may be, where would you go? I will go to heaven. Heaven. And why would you go to heaven? Because I believe in God. Amen. And he ha have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, sir. He has. I spoke with Justice and, um, about sin, about salvation, about heaven, about hell. And let me tell you something. He knows a whole lot more than some of you. <laughs> so he wants to follow the Lord in baptism, aren't, do you? Huh? Amen. All right. So... What would your pleasure be concerning justice following the Lord in baptism and become a member of this church? Are you in favor of that? Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one other thing that I would like to do, if it's okay with justice. I would like to give his godly daddy the opportunity to baptize this young man. He walks with the Lord, so why not? Amen? Why not? If you'd be in favor of that, would you raise your hand, please? down in the opposition. We'll schedule that a little bit later. Is it okay with your daddy baptize you? That's okay? Yes, sir. I don't think he'll hold you down too long, would he? <laughs> I don't think so. God bless you. Thank you so much. Isn't this a blessing? Wow. What a blessing. This young man right here truly amazes me. I know y'all amaze me too, but, but, but he really amazed me. We had a little testimonial service, um, I think it was last week, I think it was, and Justice went home and made sure that they had another testimonial service at home. He went and got his little play microphone, and he went to each one of them, testimony, 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 testimony. I think he even asked, asked his stuffed animal for a testimony, didn't you? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Amen. What a blessing, amen. What a blessing. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we leave. Uh, we will not be having evening service this, this, this evening to give you an opportunity to visit with your family. If your mother is still living, please contact her and let her know how much you love her. If she's gone on to be with the Lord, then just thank God for your mother. Amen. Again, I know there's mixed feelings concerning that. Next Saturday morning, we'll have our Iron Man breakfast over at the Family Center. The ladies will have their auxiliary uh, and Bible study here at 9 a.m. as well. And then next Sunday afternoon, we'll have our deacons meeting, and also we'll have our business meeting next Sunday evening as well. And we will be in the Family Center on Wednesday night with our Bible studies and the children program as well. Any other announcements that need to be made? Would you stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer?